next panelist is Mike Lowe, who's with SATX4 and Black Lives Matter. And Black Lives Matter. Here's Mike. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Hi. Right, Mikey is on. I want to thank um, the facilitators for this invitation to sit and stand before you, as well as break bread uh, with my brothers and sisters in this struggle against the prison industrial complex. Again, my name is Mike Lowe. I'm one of the co-founders of SATX4, uh, which was birthed uh, wow, about a year ago um, with the non-indictment of Darren Wilson. So as the world watched another white officer uh, be acquitted of any and all charges and a young black male be dehumanized all across the media, I was outraged. That was the turning point in my life which uh, allowed me the opportunity to sit at the table. I believe a picture is worth a thousand words, so I want to paint a picture for you real quick. Um, enough about me and what I do. Um, if I could have all the men, um, nothing against the women here because uh, the, the picture I'm gonna paint um, uh, stems around right. All the men, please come forward. All the men, please, real quick. All the men, real quick. All the men, all the men. All the men, because this is gonna be perfect. All the men. All right. So, I'm a, don't hold this against me, but I need all the white men to stand right here on, on, the, on the stage, all the white men. Left to right, all right, and just stand side by side. If you identify as Hispanic, uh, Latino, I want you to stand right in front of them, make a line across. All right, and then I need uh, all black men to stand in front of our Hispanic brothers, real quick. All right, okay, all right, so now this is interesting because, well, where do you want to be tonight? You want to be mixed? Stand right here. Okay, that's fine. We'll put you right here. All right. So, statistically, the data shows that, um, and um, my dear brother Maximo said it best when he quoted it, um, in a perfect world, we all would live and live free. But in the society that we do live in, um, one out of 17 white males will be incarcerated in his lifetime. One out of 17, right? So we don't have 17 now. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have to kind of stretch this, this number out, right? So kind of just, just spread your arms out double length. Yeah, spread it out double length. Yeah, yeah. So just imagine 17 white men up here, all right? Um, unfortunately, we don't have 17. So this gentleman, and I'm not speaking anything over your life, is the one that's going to prison. All right. Um, here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exactly seven individuals that the criminal justice system looks at. And we say this gentleman right here, come stand right here. One out of six Hispanic males will find himself in a prison industrial complex, right? All right. Now, one out of three. Black men, one out of three. So, one, two, three. So you're gonna be representative of him right here. So you, he's gonna find himself, no, that's fine, you can, we can just stand right there. One out of three black men in this country is gonna find himself in prison. So I've never been good at math, I always needed like pictures. And so what I want you all to take from this is, again, double arm, double arm, this is, this is 17 white men. They all done the same crime, right? This gentleman is the one who's gonna represent the one out of 17. One out of six Hispanics and one out of three. One out of three black men is gonna find himself incarcerated. One out of six Hispanics and then one out of 17 white men. I'm gonna say it one more last time. One out of three black men will find himself incarcerated. One out of six and one out of 17. So, three will go into 17 how many times? We're my mathematicians. Three will go into 17 how many times? Almost six. <laughs> what? Is it, is it almost six? It's 18, we're rounding up, all right? So almost six, that's what we're saying. So imagine one, two, three, four, five. 
And my brother, mixed brother right here, because they don't identify him as black when he, when he does his crime. That's, that's the picture. We not even half of the white men that will find themselves incarcerated. Y'all may have a seat. Give this gentleman a round of applause. I would like to say uh, what I'm doing as an individual in this community, which is very unique. San Antonio's a unique community in that San Antonio's uh, the good old boy city. It doesn't want to address the inequalities that exist in America. So as a good old boy city, it will do everything in its power to silence the voices and paint over the atrocities that are going on in this city. San Antonio uh, is, leads the nation when it comes to, we talk about police brutality and officers who use excessive force. So if you were ever in an officer uh, engaged situation and you had a complaint, uh, the records show that San Antonio leads this country with more complaints than any other city. But again, as Maxim or my brother said, you will not know that um, because of the good old boy system. America was founded on, repeat after me, white supremacy. Now, if that makes you uncomfortable, I will push you a little further. America was built upon white supremacy. And what does white supremacy do? It invades, it takes over, it controls, and it profits off the backs of those of whom it oppresses, whether it be the Native Americans, as we push them far west and colonize, and I say we, we're talking about as the white man colonized this country and then brought over slaves and in instituted slavery and created laws, documents that we quote today, constitutions. And in far-reaching amendments, we still continue the cycle of oppression. So we got rid of slavery, but what did we replace it with? Jim Crow laws. What did Jim Crow laws do? Segregation. It continued to segregate, to divide us. And then when we finally abolished Jim Crow laws, what did we do? We instituted what my dear brother and sisters have been talking about, the war on drugs. Why did white people flee the cities and go out to rural areas? Because that cycle of segregation was still being perpetuated. Blacks, browns, and poor whites are marginalized, they're inferior, and we can't be around them. So as whites moved out, the, the cities were infiltrated with drugs. And so the system of oppression continued. So Jim Crow was replaced with the new Jim Crow, what we call the prison industrial complex, mass incarceration. And so the picture I painted for you with, with, uh, with men, let me paint it for you with women. There's not enough women to paint this picture, but you can write this down. Because I believe what I'm doing is educating the people, educating my people about facts and numbers. They say men lie, women lie, but numbers don't. One in 19 women, black women, will be incarcerated in her lifetime. One in 45 Hispanic women will be incarcerated in their lifetime. One in 118 white women will be incarcerated in their lifetime. So I continue to educate on using sources such as the ACLU.org, the MarshallProject.org, and the SentencingProject.org, and Maximo said her best. How can we talk about mass incarceration without talking about what brought us here, Dr. King? And Dr. King has this quote I want to share with you. He says, human progress is neither automatic or nor inevitable. Every step towards justice, which we the people believe in justice, but the criminal injustice system doesn't believe in justice. Let me pause in my quote about Martin Luther King and just add this caveat. Lady justice is not blind. Follow me. Lady Justice was never blind. Why would you blindfold someone that's blind? White supremacy blindfolded her. 
So now we get to tell Lady Justice what she should do and how she must act with the power of the pen. We talked about changing laws, legislation. So we the people who believe in justice must continue to do now, picking up the quote with Martin Luther King. He says, human progress is either automatic or inevitable. Every step towards the goal of justice, which we all believe in, requires sacrifice. Say sacrifice. sacrifice. Requires suffering. Say suffering. suffering. And finally, requires struggle. struggle. Who here is willing to sacrifice? Who's here willing to struggle? Who's here willing to suffer? My sister Sasha and, 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 and Kathy. And then we have, is it Jennifer? You struggle. You know what that's like. But it requires, and I close with this quote, the tireless exertions and passionate concern of dedicated individuals. You all, right here can embody what Dr. King wanted in the goal towards justice. Sacrifice, struggle, suffering. We can't give up. We can't stop talking about this.